The train pulled into Junction City right at sundown. Cottonwood trees stood black against the last light as I unloaded Rutherford in the bay. I had grown used to skimpy towns with grand names by that time, but Junction City took the cake. There were two or three weathered buildings still standing, and some jumbled piles of burned timbers and planks here and there, but little else. The late light reflected off the river, and a pair of sandhill cranes took flight from the muddy bank, but that's about all there was to see at Junction. There used to be quite a town here, the flagman said. A merchant named Basinki opened a general store over there near the ferry landing back in 77. River steamers were still coming up the Yellowstone then, bringing supplies from downriver. Within a year or two, there was a fair-sized settlement here. But sometime in 83, a fire broke out in a saloon and burned up most of the town. Riverboats stopped coming when the Northern Pacific came through. There are a few freight handlers that still pick up supplies here, and Northwestern Express runs a stage line from across the river at Custer Station, some 90 miles south to Rock Creek, Wyoming. But I don't figure the town's ever coming back. I won't be here long anyway, I said. I'm heading south come morning. Just then, the train whistle's hollow snort broke up our powwow. No rest for the weary, the flag man said. Time to go back to work. I'm obliged for your help, I said, and for the card game. Why don't you take that money I lost and buy yourself a new deck? The flag man laughed, turning away toward the train. Couldn't do that, deputy, he said. I don't have time to mark a new deck. I still don't know if he was joking or not. The light was nearly gone by the time I led the horses to a grassy knoll away from the river and staked them out. Below, in one of Junction City's few remaining buildings, lamplight glowed yellow in a window. From somewhere down there, a dog barked. Far away, down the track, I could hear the lonesome wail of the train's whistle. I made myself a meal of beef jerky and water before I unrolled my bed and slipped into it. I lay on my back and looked at the stars for a while, thinking about all that Ridgeway had told me. I wondered what kind of a man Jeff Brown might be, and I hoped he was up to the job of keeping the peace in Medicine Lodge. More to the point, I hoped I was up to the job. And then I thought of Pandora. I recalled her face, the cheekbones high and touched with color, her large dark eyes shining and warm when she looked at me. Then I remembered how she had looked when I told her I couldn't take her to the dance. She would go then, she said, with Johnny Peters. With Johnny Peters? Well, if that's the way she was going to be, she could just go with that darn nose picker. I surely didn't care. <laughs>